2019 at 7 o'clock. If you would stand and salute the flag with me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, Commissioner Nobles. Here. Commissioner Baxley is excused tonight. Vice Mayor Rogers. Here. Commissioner Rieger. Here. Uh, Mr. Voss, good evening. Our attorney, Mr. Jackson, our city manager, Mr. Campbell, our finance director, Kristen Bates, our city clerk, and members of the public. Thank you for being here and welcome to our meeting. Is Pastor Ethan Crowder in the house? Thank you, sir. We always like to start our meeting with a word of prayer. We want to remember our troops as they fight all over the world to defend our freedoms. We want to remember our federal government and pray a hedge of protection around our president. Uh, pray for wisdom and for safety as he travels. We want to remember our local government, uh, those who work here and live here and play here. Um, we also want to remember Pastor Daisy Henry and her family as her son was found dead this morning. So if you would please lift up in prayer for her, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Father, we come before you this evening uh, grateful that we live um, in this community. Uh, Lord, we're grateful that we live uh, in a land that is free. Uh, and we're grateful for those who have sacrificed uh, and who continue to sacrifice for the freedoms that we enjoy. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give uh, our elected officials both here uh, and uh, in Washington and in Tallahassee, Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom, pray that you would give them grace and strength to lead uh, through the different situations that they, uh, they encounter this evening and as they continue to lead. Uh, Father, we pray especially uh, tonight for the Henry family. Lord, we pray that uh, your peace and your grace would be known uh, to them. Uh, Lord, we pray that, uh, that they would know that you're good even whenever, uh, even whenever uh, times may say that you're not. Uh, Lord, we know uh, that you're good because of the gospel of Jesus Christ that has provided salvation. And so Lord, we pray uh, that they would know that tonight uh, and that they would know that in the days to come. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your, your time tonight. <clears throat> All right, so we have a proclamation tonight and a presentation. We have a, a proclamation regarding opi Opiate Awareness Month. Is there someone here representing that group? No? I'm going to read it anyway. All right. Whereas Fiverr County in the state of Florida is in the midst of a public health and safety crisis caused by the opiate epidemic and characterized by an alarming rate of opiate overdose deaths, and whereas opiate overdoses have recently claimed the lives of far too many Fiverr County residents, and whereas the National Safety Council reported on January the 14th, 2019, that for the first time Americans are more likely to die from an accidental opiate overdose than from a motor vehicle crash. And whereas opiate overdoses can be prevented and lives can be saved. And whereas we recognize that substance use of, uh, disorder is a disease, that individuals with substance use disorder comes from diverse backgrounds, and uh, five in every part of our state, and furthermore, that recovery from substance use disorder is possible. And whereas the toll that substance use disorder takes on individuals, families, Friends and communities must drive us to do all that we can to reduce its impact and help Flagler County residents lead healthy, successful, and productive lives. And whereas we must come together to build on the existing work and successful initiatives of the state agencies, stakeholder coalitions, and community partners to contain the opiate epidemic. And whereas Flagler County needs a comprehensive plan to address opiate misuse and reduce overdose deaths in our county. And whereas the purpose of the task force is to develop, approve, and implement a comprehensive opiate action plan <clears throat> to, one, pre prevent the further spread of the opiate crisis, two, treat and promote the recovery of individuals with opiate use disorder, and three, respond effectively to avert opiate over overdose deaths. Now, therefore, I, Catherine D. Robinson, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Benel, Florida, do hereby proclaim July 2019 as Opiate Awareness Month and urge all citizens, interest groups, and affected persons to join us in promoting the awareness and prevention of the opiate crisis in our community during the month of July and to take an active role in the fight to end opiate addiction and overdose adopted this 22nd day of July 2019. 
sure if I had a show of hands, there would be many of you that have been affected by this either directly or indirectly. So certainly it is a crisis all over our country and in our local area as well. So uh, it's important that we recognize this and to know and feel that if someone is in trouble and has pain that we need to help them, reach out and help them. So that's part of being a good neighbor. And I know you, you plan to do that, so thank you. We have a presentation recognition of award to Officer Matt Hersey. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Honorable uh, City Commissioners, City Officials, Mr. Public. My name come is on Ed, up. Come on up. My name is Ed Fuller, and I'd like to have uh, Mr. Hershey come up here, Officer Hershey and Chief. Come on, Chief. <coughs> this is your man. Honorable uh, City Commissioners, it is a privilege and an honor to be here this evening to address you about one of our heroes. Every day that they put on their vest, go out, get in that car, sometimes they enter combat. In this particular instance, in August 6, 2018, Officer Hirsch did exactly what he was trained to do and was supposed to do and carried it out. Crime Stoppers Spirit Award is a very prestigious award. It covers four agencies, Putnam, St. John's, Volusia, and Flagler. And Officer Hershey won that award on those four prestigious agencies. Now, Bunnell may not be the biggest police department, but I'll tell you what, tonight you all should be the proudest. Uh, and I also want to, with that, and we know about training, so I, I want to say a little bit, if I may, about the chief. Uh, I, I want to thank Chief Foster for his 40 years of law enforcement service to our community. He is a recognized ex expert in tactical squad training nationwide. And I want to commend the city, uh, the Bedell City Commission and all the officers in the Bedell Police Department for doing an outstanding job in the community. Thank you so much. It, it's, it's much appreciated. I, as a citizen, can't thank you enough because it's all about funding, training, and you, you can't do it unless you have the people and the personnel and the leaders. So I want to thank you as a citizen and from the Crime Stoppers Board. One of those officers is Matt Hershey. Through his training and situational awareness, he exemplified the very best judgment on 8-6-2018 in an encounter in, uh, in a traffic stop by Flagler Deputy uh, Duenez uh, and Alfonso Bank, uh, Brooks. Uh, Mr. Uh, Brooks was pulled in and a routine, uh, and, I, and I say that's an oxymoron, there is no routine traffic uh, stops. Uh, uh, Officer uh, Duenez was talking to uh, Mr. Brooks and the conversation was cordial and uh, certainly didn't seem like there was going to be any, any uh, agitation whatsoever, he was going to comply. But somewhere in the four minute encounter, Mr. Alfonso, when asked to get out of the vehicle, now this is at night, asked to get out of the vehicle, went for a gun. At that split second, Officer Hershey, because of his training, his situational awareness, immediately pulled out his gun and, and informed the other police officer, the other deputy sheriff, that the uh, individual was pulling a gun. In that instant, he saved three lives. Hmm. His own, Mr. Alfonso, and Deputy Duenas. Where do we get people like this? He's standing over here and I hope I'm embarrassing him. Because you know what? <laughs> Police don't take compliments very well. Do you know why? They're Isn't very that true, humble. Chief? Yeah, they're very humble, as well as the chief. Yes. They are amazing individuals, and they are the thin blue line, and they put it on the line every day for us. Yeah. So I could stay up here and talk in ad litem about this individual and the chief, and you all, for supporting this law, this law enforcement agency. But it's more important about the hero of the night 
and heroes that are standing here and heroes in this audience. And you all as well, because you support them. So I, on behalf of the Crime Stoppers of Northeast Florida, I want to present the Spirit Award from the Northeast Crime Stoppers organization to Officer Matt Hershey. Like Mr. Ed said, we don't take compliments well. <laughs> uh, we look at it, we just come and do our job. Uh, thankfully, we have a great chief. He pushes us to be the best we can be every day we come to work. Um, without him, you know, this agency wouldn't be what it is. So. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Oh. I'm going to fill in for the chief because he doesn't want us to talk, and I get that. I understand that. But like I said, humility runs big in this department and in this community. And you do great things on a daily basis. And when something like this occurs, we can't thank them and you enough. And it's one of these days where if I, if I was king for the day, I certainly would say this would be <laughs> Officer Hershey. <laughs> because to save another one's life, that's truly amazing. And what a gift that is. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for all your support, and may God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We love you, Hershey. <laughs> 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 he wasn't embarrassed before, he is now. We're very proud of our police department. They train hard, they work hard, and they have a great leader. There's no question about that. So um, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service and dedication because it's all of you. But thank you um, for this, this hero for tonight. And he's not the only one. There have been others. But how cool is that? Out of four counties, he, he was given that award. That's pretty special. So thank you. All right, we are now at the consent agenda. Um, C1 is approval of the warrant of July 22nd, 2019. C2 is approval of the minutes of 2019 City Commission meeting minutes. C3 is request approval of the River to Sea TPO funding agreement. C4 is request for the letter of support for the Fiverr County Sheriff's Office grant application. C5 is request approval to increase the Ferguson Waterworks threshold. Are there any items that the board would like to pull off for further discussion? Hearing none, what is the pleasure of the board? Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Rogers. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Nobles. Discussion by the board on any of these items? Hearing none, I close our discussion. Open for public discussion. Hearing none, I close public discussion. All those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion is approved. We are now at public comments. Public comments in our meeting is the time where you can come up and you can speak to anything that you would like to speak to that is not already on the agenda item. So if you have something you want to address, some compliment you want to give, some constructive criticism that you would like to give, this is, and it's not on the agenda already, this is the time for you to do that. We ask that you come up and state your name and your address um, and speak to us what's on your heart and in your mind. We also run a very civil meeting. We expect for you to be civil to us and we expect and demand that you'll be civil back. We'll be civil back to you. Um, we like to limit our meetings to four minutes so we get home before the next day. Um, so if you would respect that, we would appreciate it. So I'm now going to open it up to the floor. So if there's something you would like to speak to that's not already on the agenda, please come up to the podium and speak in the mic and tell us your name and address. And there's a sign-up sheet so that um, they can spell your name. Now I know some of you wanted to speak. Is it something on the agenda, or you just decided you don't want to speak? Going once? <laughs> All right. 
Um, oh, I'll speak. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Your name? Good evening. Uh, Jim McCusker, 112 Grand Reserve. Okay. Okay. I'd like to know what our future taxes look like. We don't know yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that means they're going down, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that, but doesn't mean it's going up either. We will have, uh, we have not had any budget workshops yet. Mm -hmm. We will have two budget workshops. We will be looking at the proposed budget from the staff. We will go through that. We will set our millage rate tonight. tonight. Our millage rate will be set tonight, and what that means, you probably already know, is that once we set the millage rate, we cannot go any higher than the millage rate, we could go lower. And actually, last year, we did do that. So we don't know yet how that's going to work out. Do you know over in Grand Reserve if the city is considering or will do the, um, uh, the reclaimed water? I think that's still in process. So there's no word on that yet. I, I don't have any word on that. We'll have to wait and see um, if the if there is further word on that. I know we've been talking about reclaimed what about, water. What about speed bumps? Can we address that? Uh, that's uh, up for discussion as well. <laughs> We're pretty open here. Well, we, fine, but we got no answers. Well, that's because there are questions that have not been asked yeah. to the board. All right, you have to come up, sir, if you want to speak. Your, your turn, John. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I violated our own rules because I'm not supposed to dialogue with you. You're just supposed to have public comment. So I apologize for that. But. Yes, sir. My name sir. is John Day, 112 Grand Reserve Drive. I got a question about the, the road itself, uh, Grand Reserve Drive, connecting 1 and 100. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a freeway for anybody who wants to use it, but we're paying for it. Okay. So, what is the solution? We'll have to look at it and see. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> so, your, your concern is the street and the, I'm assuming, speeding. Well, not only the speeding. I, it's just a matter that everybody thinks it's they own the road. We get, uh, for instance, uh, I'll give you an idea. We get bicyclists who come through there in gangs. I call them the spandex crew. And all they do is just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And for what purpose? I mean, if we're paying for the road, why can't we have some say about who uses it? Well, I don't think it works that way, sir. It's well, obviously it doesn't. Okay, thank you, sir. Someone else? All right, if there's no one else that wants to get up and speak. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out. I'm closing public comment, but someone came up before the meeting and expressed concern that we were going to, I guess, de-annex you and Grand Reserve to the, your own separate township. Um, one, I don't think that's legal. The attorney will weigh in. You couldn't create a separate city or, or anything like that. Two, we're not interested in doing that to you. <laughs> Three, we're very happy you're part of the city of Benel. So um, I don't know where that rumor started, but that is not a valid rumor. You can't become a township on your own. We're not going to send you to Palm Coast. Um, you're going to stay with us, and we're very happy that you're here. And we hope to have a long and very wonderful relationship with you. And for those of you that are here from Grand Reserve, you have a beautiful area back there. And I've been guilty of riding my bike through there, but I didn't go in droves and I didn't wear spandex. Um, it was just my husband and I, and I toured your model homes and they looked beautiful. And welcome to the city of Benel. We're glad to have you. So there you go. Madam Mayor. Yes. Mike, uh, do you want to share those dates with them since it was a question? The public hearing dates? There has been a calendar that has been um, um, developed. 
And we are at the July the 22nd, so we will set the millage rate and public hearings. July the 29th will be the City Commission Budget Workshop to review the general fund. And it says here water and sewer and solid waste. We are not doing all three of those budgets in the same night. There's no way we could get through that. So we'll be doing probably um, the general fund first. Um, we have another workshop date. What is the second one? August 5th, and we need to determine the time. Okay, so August 5th. And then on uh, September the 9th, we have the first public hearing to adopt the tentative millage rate and the budget itself. September the 19th, we advertise for the final budget hearing with the budget summary. And then September the 23rd, the final public hearing to adopt the final millage and budget. So those are the two public hearings that are required. There are time certain dates that have to go with that. We can't have our meetings when other people have their meetings. So all of that is strategically scheduled. So that's the tentative um, calendar at this point. All right? All right. So we are now at E, ordinances, and we have none. F is resolutions. Uh, F1 is resolution 2019-08, discontinuing the conflict resolution process initiated by resolution 2019-04. Mr. Voss. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2019-08, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Benal, Florida, discontinuing the conflict resolution process initiated by resolution 2019-04 and providing for findings, conflicts, severability, and an effective day. Mayor, Commissioners, um, as the uh, title indicates, this discontinues the uh, conflict resolution process pursuant to Chapter 164 of Florida Statutes relating to that uh, resolution I previously cited. This related to uh, the conflict resolution process that was initiated concerning uh, concerns about the action that was taken by the uh, Flagler County Board of County Commissioners uh, previously back in April. This resolution discontinues it without prejudice to any right or remedy of the city uh, or the city commission's ability to subsequently reinitiate a conflict resolution process if we have any further uh, concerns about this or any related issue. So based on uh, the information you all had previously uh, received at your June 10, 2019 meeting uh, concerning these matters from a number of county officials, staff is recommending approval of resolution 2019-08. Thank you, Mr. Boss. Um, so what's the pleasure of the board regarding resolution 2019-08? Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. I'd like to make the motion that we approve resolution 2019-08, discontinuing the conflict resolution process initiated by resolution 2019-04. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Rieger. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Rogers. Discussion by the board. So we've met with the, the county and we had the county administrator come and speak to us about future plans regarding the county commission. We also had the sheriff come and talk to us about the philosophy of why he is moving into districts. Um, since that time, we've had a couple of public meetings about that. And uh, there's actually now two signs that have been put up over by the library area. And one of those signs is stating where the future of the uh, district office for the sheriff will be in the city of Bunnell, just to update you. Is there anything else that I missed, uh, Mr. Jackson, regarding that? No? Okay. All right. Any comments by the board? Hearing none, I close our comments. Open for public comments. Seeing no one come forward, I close public comments. Call for the vote. All those in favor of approving resolution 2019-08 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Old business, we have none. New business, we have a lot. Uh, H1 is appeal of the decision of the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board regarding public hearing PZA number 2019-15, special exception request to allow a mixed charge project at 2585 Old Hall Creek Road. Good, good evening, Rodney. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. We're here um, at the request of this item is an appeal by appellant Gwendolyn Laverty, property owner and business owner, 105 East Lambert Street and 109 North Pine Street of Benel. Her concerns are the property will only be used commercially with high uh, 
vehicle traffic and will never be lived in, thus devaluing the land. The written notice of appeal was turned in to the city's clerk office on Monday, June 24, 2019, from the Benel Land Development Code, Section 2-86, appeals from decisions. Any person aggregated by any decision of the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board made pursuant to the provisions of this article may appeal the decision to the city's commission by filing a written request for such an appeal with the city clerk. The request must specify the de um, decision appealed and be filed within 30 days of the decision. The city commission may be made after a public hearing reverse, modify, or affirm the decision on appeal. Background. The applicant, Mark Solomon, was approved by the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board on Friday, May 31st, 2019, for a special exception request to allow a mixed-use project at 2585 Old Hall Creek Road with normal property use, con uh, use conditions. Under Section 34-107, Ag Industrial District, purpose and intent. The purpose of this district is to permit a range of agriculture and or agriculture related uses in designed designated areas and to accommodate low density residential development at a maximum concentration of one dwelling per acre. The intent of this district is to preserve and enhance an agricultural lifestyle by facilitating orderly and sustainable development. And under this, under permitted principal and accessory use, uh, item 15, uh, home occupation, C, permitted special uh, exception, permitted special exceptions in the AG district shall be as follows. Uh, other uses and structures not listed above that which certain restrictions can be compatible, compatible use with other uses in the district as approved by the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board. We did notice this uh, uh, two weeks out, 10 days, per Section 2-87 hearing notification requirements. Also, uh, under special exception notifications and advertising, uh, we did notice this in the paper 10 days out, and uh, adjacent property owners within 300 feet of this property. Uh, as required, um, the applicant is planning to build one structure, a 10,000 square foot uh, home. The commercial side will be finished first before the resident side uh, is completed. He's looking at having 8,000 square feet for commercial site and 2,000 for residential site uh, for agriculture and home occupation. Uh, in your packet, you'll see where uh, the appellant, Ms. Laverty, has uh, stated her reasons in here. Uh, I don't know if the commission had an opportunity to, to read uh, those things. And she uh, recently had did another letter to the commission uh, just several days ago. But it is, uh, this is a quasi-judicial matter that has been appealed by, appealed to the city <coughs> commission for a decision. <coughs> Staff recommends the decision of May 31st, 2019, Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board decision be affirmed and upheld. The PZA board approved the project contingent on all required life safety measures needed for mixed use are in place before the residential space is occupied and if the applicant can demonstrate that the commercial use will not impact or affect the residential uses that are near and planned for the lots adjacent to the uh, subject parcel. That concludes. Uh, Do you know what the commercial use is gonna be? Yes, so Mr. Solomon has a foam uh, business where he you know, uh, shoots foam into walls and in ceilings. Insulation foam. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. Is he gonna be manufacturing the foam there? He has a, a truck with uh, the device that, that, that blows these, these types of uh, particles that is the uh, installation itself. So he's gonna be running the commercial motor vehicles 
out of the 8,000 square foot building? Yes, he has two uh, trucks and two trailers. Then so, other space he needs for other things that he's acquired. So he's going to build the 8,000 square foot building first? He's going to build the whole 10,000, but he's 10, just going to do the build out of the 8,000 first to sustain his, his income coming in. Then work through that to finish the residential site so he can move in. And what is that? Agriculture. Agriculture. Yes, sir. That don't sound like agriculture to me. All right, so we're gonna have a quasi-judicial hearing here, correct? That's right. So, so will you outline the process? Uh, sure. Uh, we've, do we have the appellant present? They're, they're both here. They're both here, okay. Uh, my recommendation, and we'll go ahead uh, and Chris and I didn't give you a little script this time, but oh, you kept it good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ask anyone who's, uh, including the applicant and the appellant, uh, anyone who's going to be offering any testimony concerning this to please go ahead uh, and raise your right hand and be sworn at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And, uh, Mayor, I would recommend that, uh, in this instance, the applicant be given, the initial applicant be given an opportunity to speak, the appellant be given an opportunity to speak, and then you can uh, take additional public comment. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. The applicant? Make a motion later. There is no motion yeah. made yet. We haven't heard the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So you think the motion I, I would recommend hearing, hearing the uh, evidence right. presented. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Your name, sir? Mark Samelman, 2585 Old Hall Creek Road. Right so you're already living on the property? Uh, no, I own the property. So, yes. I purchased the property from George Island. I, before purchasing the property, you know, Mr. Allen and I rode around in his truck, looked at land, we discussed my intent, what I'm going to do. Um, my uh, a buddy of mine who just also put up an 8,000 square foot building right next to my property, we discussed this in length. And was Mr. Allen explained what our intent was to put up a couple metal, metal buildings, and that I do want to live in this metal building. Mr. Leiden already put his 8,000 square foot building up and already has his residence built out in the 8,000 square foot building where he also houses his boats and an RV and four wheelers. And that's, it's not, you know, as far as the space, it does sound like a lot of space, yes, but for the same reasons I want, I need space because I have a boat and four wheelers, etc. And my idea with my boys is to have a space out in the country just like everybody would like to have a little space out in the country to be able to do things with boys like ride four wheelers and you know actually put a horse out there as well because it's part of a pasture um you know and i do have a small business very small business two trucks two trailers and to answer you guys' questions earlier um, i don't manufacture anything there currently um you know what, what we do is we uh, it's spray foam uh, polyurethane spray foam we basically put it in a trailer we take it to new construction job sites and we we spray foam in homes is what we do we're a small insulation business and uh, uh family owned and so uh you know i explained it in length to mr allen i want to put up this building i want to get the building up first and you know i'm in the trades so what i want to do is barter some of the things out get my buddies you know who are framers and drywallers and i want to pay for that portion out of it out of my pocket I don't want to initially in the build. I don't want. I didn't want to finance the house, you know, as far as part of the building. What I want to do is get the building up, and then have a little bit of time to build out the residence inside the home. Is what I want to do. Um, so, Mr. Allen had no objections to it at all. Um, as far as my phone conversation with him last week, he has doesn't even see what the fuss is about. This is the same conversation that him and I shook hands on this deal. There's no, not hiding anything. Uh, you know, I even spoke about buying more land for Mr. Allen, you know, um, and I've referred people for that same pasture to buy land out there. Um, there's another metal building going up. There's already existing metal buildings out there on the same road. Um, so, um, 
That's pretty much it, you know. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I, I plan to build out my residence over the next, you know, few years as money. How many years? Flow. I, we put in there up to 36 months. But I'm sure <clears> once the building goes up, I plan to, you know, start paying. It's cash flow. Whenever I have the cash flow, I can work a barter deal with a buddy to do some framing in there. Get some sheetrock in the foundation plan. I already have the plans all drawn up for it. It's a four bedroom home. Concrete, the slab that's going in, the plumbing's already in, and everything. And from what I understand, the, the, the person or that opposes this idea doesn't even believe that I'm building a home in there, which I 100% building a home in there. Dell, you know, Peter, Peter <coughs> Dell Construction, he's the, he's the general contractor. He's my buddy, he's my neighbor, you know, Elliot. Uh, who's the other person that we three bought five acres and subdivided it. Again, this is all transparent and agreeable with Mr. Allen that he's getting ready to pull his own permit to put in his own 10,000 square foot building up out there on Old Hall Creek Road and build a residence in it. It's a very popular thing. You know, it's happy, you know, because, you know, steel, you know, res you know, steel buildings are, you can get a lot for your money, a lot of real estate there. So. What do you want to turn it into commercial for? It's mixed use. It's because I run a small business, I want to, you know, in terms of commercial, I just want to be able to, I'm trying to play by the rules here. I'm, I'm just, you know, in terms of commercial, I'm not trying to make an industrial park out here. I'm trying to have my building where I can have my residence, have my toys, you know, have my, uh, have my, uh, uh, my business out there as well, operating it, kind of just like, you know, Flyer County Roofing runs their trucks up and down the road. They have, you know, there's other businesses on that road. My yeah, they're, they're two not. trucks aren't going to make any kind of, you know, impact any more than anybody else that's out there, you know, in terms of trucks and trailers. And they're just, they're not semis. They're, you know, 250 trucks and 20-foot trailers, you know. So um, is, is there any other questions I can answer for you? Vladimir. Uh, yeah, that's my Rogers. Of questions. What what um, application of vehicles are you going to be running? I have currently I have a Chevy fifteen hundred and I have a Dodge thirty five hundred Ram and I have uh, a sixteen foot trailer enclosed trailer a twenty foot enclosed trailer and actually an eighteen foot flatbed trailer. And that's basically my company right there. So um, is the foam insulation going to be delivered to you? Yes. So how is that going to be delivered? A 26-foot box truck. So a box truck yes. is going to come in and, and deliver it? Yes. And how are they going to offload it? Uh, it comes on the left gate. Uh, is there forklifts there at your facility? To I'll have, have to get a forklift to unload my material, yes. Okay. And um, what hours of operation are you, are you going to be running? Uh, like 9 to 5. So it's not a place, it's not retail, it's not a place anybody's going to come to, you know. It's, uh, it, it's uh, basically a shop, is all it is. It's well, like a little shop. It's where I keep my stuff. I, I, I got a lot of stuff. I got insulation, it comes in, you know, it, it comes in, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have to insulate just in fiberglass one home, you know, a, a three, two, three thousand square foot home. It comes in big bundles of it. It just takes up a lot of space, you know, fill up all this area right here just to insulate one home. So that's you know why I need more space. So. But I'm, it's a home-based business is all I'm in, you know. Any of the comments, uh, Vice Mayor Rogers? Uh, I'd like to reserve the right to bring them back up after the uh, okay. other party speaks. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Good evening. Hi. <coughs> Good evening. I'm Lynn Lafferty. Um, so, a couple things. Um, one thing is that on the on tonight's agenda summary, it says that I appealed because solely because not solely, but one of the reasons I appealed. The main reason is because I don't believe that he lives there. And actually, the main reason that I appealed is because my family and I own the property all the way around this property that's all zoned ag, that's all possibly future ag residential, nice country homes, that sort of thing. Um, and one of the main reasons that I appealed was because I don't feel like it qualifies as a home occupation. 
the section 34107 of the land development code defines agricultural district as low density residential development at a max concentration of one dwelling per acre the intent of this district is to preserve and enhance an agricultural lifestyle while facilitating orderly and sustainable development it lists the uh, permitted principal accessory uses and structures, and one of those is home occupations, which I would interpret as meaning if you live in a home in the country on ag zone land, you may operate your business out of your home if you're approved by the PZA board and then possibly the commission if it comes to that. So since Mr. Samelman doesn't live here, I would contest that it doesn't qualify as a home occupation and so it wouldn't meet your land development code. Um, Mr. Lucas actually just in his presentation called it an ag home occupation and I would argue that spray foam insulation and box trucks are not ag home occupations. Um, if this is permitted, maybe Mr. Rogers might like to buy a piece of property on ag zone property and run his tow truck business out of it because that could technically be your home occupation. Um, phase one and two of his plan here shows two garages, two shops, two gravel driveways, two parking areas. And at the PZA board meeting, Mr. Samelman stated for public comment that he intended on renting out the second half of the property um, to offset his costs and that he already had a significant amount of money invested and that that would deteriorate his uh, plans on the property. <coughs> So my main concern was that the PZA board had a very loose approval of his application, giving him the 36 months to move in to do this home occupation. My questions would be, how would this be, um, how would they police this at all? If he decided not to move in, if he put a body shop in next door to him, um, I was told that it would be very difficult for another another person, if you did rent it out, to get a business license for that, but people <coughs> argue about those frequently, as we've heard recently here in the last couple meetings. Um, uh, let's see. The other thing is, is that I remember I, I was looking back at my notes and I had the PZA um, board write-up that Mr. Lucas wrote, and he stated in that that the commercial use will be built before the residential size side and the size of the commercial use space will exceed the allowable space for the applicant to be considered as an ag home op occupation so i was curious as to why that passed despite that i mean if it's not if it doesn't fall into the criteria um, he also made the approval subject to the applicant demonstrating that no impact would come to the adjacent properties and I feel like he's not demonstrated that at all considering the fact that he's talked about deliveries and trucks and then you know are you going to stipulate that there was no stipulation as to the size of his business there was no stipulation as to um, you know what other how his business could grow within this space so I'm just concerned that it would deteriorate and affect the surrounding uh, property. Um, he brought up his neighbor, Pete Lydon, the 8,000 square foot residence. Pete lives there now. He has, I've seen the inside of it, it's very nice. He lives there and occupies that right now. So that's um, not apples to apples. Um, what, how would the city enforce this if he did never move in? I, is what I would like to ask. And it seems like it would make more, more sense to have him homestead it now um, and then pl apply for the home occupation. I don't have any, I don't think that any of us have, as the surrounding landowners, have a problem with someone building a metal building, or I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is, and, and living in it and running a home a true home occupation out of it as long as these other things the non-impact and everything else is considered because that's what's within the land development code so we just ask that you consider tonight um, what defines that and how you feel you're able to hone it in and make sure that he is within that code thank you thank you do you have questions for her no. All right, thank you. 
Mayor, before you open up for public comment, there's one thing I um, should have asked you all to do before. If any of you all have uh, had any ex parte communications, uh, communications uh, with anyone in the public, including the applicant and the um, appellant concerning this matter, if you all could just disclose it in the general nature of uh, those. I've not had any verbal contact. I did receive a letter from Ms. Lafferty, as we all did. But I've, I've not spoken to anyone verbally, or any, no one's called me. Uh, I've had an attorney uh, representing uh, the uh, landowner um, contact me. As a matter of fact, I referred him to you, um, Shimento, yeah. and uh, he forwarded the email to the city. And I have had contact with some uh, uh, people that are opposed to it. I haven't received it. I received the email that was forwarded on, but I haven't received any communication from the Chimenta firm. Commissioner Rager? Yes, I also have had ex parte communications with Ms. Lafferty. We were discussing and trying to figure through the convolution between the home occupation scenario and whether that part of the, um, whether home occupations under Section 34186, whether those issues applied or not, but the request is for mixed use. So we were discussing the land development code in relationship to this. Commissioner Nobles? Yes, I had contact with her too. Ms. Laverty? Yeah. I would recommend you open it up for. Okay, I was just waiting to make sure. Yeah. All right, at this time I'm going to open up for public comment. Um, if you come forward, please come to the podium, speak in the mic, state your name and your address, and if you'll write your name and your address on the piece of paper there. Um, and I'm going to open up at this point, at this time. <laughs> good evening. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Congratulations on your grandson. Thank you. Your name, young lady? My name is Lila Allen Pontius. I live at 720 County Road 304 in Bunnell. I'm one of the 10 that have, that own the Allen property. I'm one of the ones that has the largest share. And my brother, when he shows the parcels, and now we have a realtor, but when he was showing all of this property, um, he would take them around and ride the people around and all, you know, but he doesn't, and I love my brother, but he doesn't have full say. And if, if he had said, if he had told us in the beginning or if he knew that it was going to be a business, I think we all would have said, we're not selling it. You know, that's not what Old Hall Creek Road is. That's a dirt road. The people down there, if, if you've ever ridden down that road, and I know it's been talked about paving the road, but if you've ever ridden down there, that's a washboard road half the time. And I know he doesn't have very big trucks, of what I understand, but you get commercial people going in there, and you ride down it afterwards. It will knock your brakes off. I know the people around, around that area, and they're opposed to it. I'm all for businesses coming into the area, but that is ag. That is agriculture area. Um, that's not commercial. To, to do a commercial business, buy a piece on US-1 or whatever where you have access to it, but not down a little dirt road where people, the kids, kids play on the side of the road and all. You just don't want that. I don't want that. as that one of the Allen land landowners. So thank you very much. Thank you. Someone else? Somebody raising their hand back there to be spit to speak? Uh, uh, okay. Anyone else? I'm going to close public comment. If you want to come back up, you can. It's fine. 
State your name again for the record, sir. Mark Samelman, 2585 Old Hall Creek Road. Um, during the discussions with Mr. Allen and therefore indirectly to the family, after everything that was presented, the plans for these metal buildings, the family stipulated and in writing, we just don't want mobile homes. They're anti-mobile home. Fine, we won't put up a mobile home, you know? So to, to the extent of how, how much we've discussed what we were doing, we even signed a contract what we won't do, which was only at that time mobile homes. Um, so uh, they're concerned about selling additional land in that pasture, you know? Um, and I understand they have a vested interest, you know? I'm, uh, so that's my point. I, that we, we ex Mr. Allen and I discussed it thoroughly exactly what I was doing to the point of, you know, no mobile homes. And, and, and I just would have never even purchased the land, folks, if I, you know, I would have invested all the money that I already have invested, which is a tremendous amount of money, you know, that for the same family that I bought this land from. Did you talk to the other members of the family I directly? I had an opportunity to. I so the answer is no. I, and Mr. Allen conveyed back to them. No, I can't I be involved in what their conversations were. Mm -hmm. I, you know, they explained to me no mobile homes, and then the closing, we signed a document that said no mobile homes. And now the same family I bought the land from wants to put an axe to my all my plans that cost me a tremendous amount of money. You know, and it's just not fair. It's not right. I'm a handshake kind of guy. I shook hands with Mr. Allen on what, exactly what we we're going to do. He has no problem with it. Even my conversation with him a few days ago. Doesn't see what the fuss is about. Wow. So. Hold on a minute. Are you finished? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Novels? No, ma'am. I was going to say, George is just a small percentage holder on that. Lila's and Moe's, and there's quite a few others, and there's a bunch of them on that. Matter of fact, my sister bought some land from them a couple of weeks ago. But she had to write a letter to every one of them and get an okay from every one of them. They sent them back to her before they would finalize the deal. And they put the same thing in her what she could. She wants to do the same thing you did, but she owned a property in front. And she, but she has to build a house there and put the garage there. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't zone a commercial. And it's in Bunnell. She had to leave it. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's residential, but she has to. She's going to run her business out of it and live yeah. in her house. Right, right. They did the same thing. But she had to get all them letters back and then bring them up and all that. So yeah. they all was aware of it then. Yeah. I've I, I, I tried to be 100% transparent from day one uh, with what I'm doing with Mr. Allen, Kristen, when she was the, uh, when she was the, uh, the planning and zoning director. I mean, I've really, truly tried to do what's right. And, you know, of course not. I, I didn't want to buy land that I couldn't do this with, and you know, so uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, I have another question. I'm no, sorry. No, I have a question. question. You have a question for who? No, Mr. Samuel. No, sorry. Uh, come back up, Commissioner Rigger. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you understand the concept of due diligence in purchasing a property? Uh, in some ways, in some ways, in my mind, it doesn't even make any difference what the owners said. The point being is, is that when you're purchasing a piece of property, it's due diligence or the onus on you as a purchaser to make sure that you can do what you think you want to do there. And I see where you might have gotten that idea from um, the building that's there, but it's very different. It's not a business. It's, it's, it's a home and a toy garage. But the... And this is the realtor in me speaking, okay? So the, so the onus in, on, on the buyer, you could have had a contract that was contingent upon getting the proper approval by the PZA board of the city of Pinnell. You know, that's what due diligence requires. So, so to, you know, as, as, as part of all the issues that we're talking about, that would be one element to this. I mean, you understand what I mean about yes. due diligence in the purchase? Yes, ma'am. I'm Unfortunately, often rely on a handshake deal, and I just never expected the family that I bought it from to contest it. You know? But it's it's the it's the issue. You're right. It's the issue that I was right. only. And I didn't make phone calls, but did I approach it 100 percent the correct way? No, I'm, I know insulation, and I'm a fireman. <laughs> Those are the two things I know: are fighting and insulation. So. It's a major issue in the purchase of property. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. You have a Vice Mayor Rogers. Yes. Um, so, are you planning on moving into the facility? Yes. You are. Yes. I just need time to build it out. I, you know, once I get in there and get the shell up, foundation plumbing's already there. I can start throwing up two by fours. You know, it's all based on cash flow. I have, you know, my, my income is based on you know cash flow. And, and I'd like to bring Miss Lafferty up here again, but but if I'm hearing her correctly, she's really concerned about you moving in to the into the uh, facility. Which I don't understand why. I mean, I already have the plans all drawn up. Even because uh, she she doesn't want a uh, red iron building running a uh, a uh, commercial uh, uh, retail insulation place out of without you having a, a home there. I, I can understand that, you know. Um, uh, but maybe we can try to resolve this, you know. Commissioner Reagan, you just recently, according to public records, purchased a home just in April of this year, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, but, I you, but you still, I nonetheless, very soon expect to build. That's why I need, you know, I figured two years, capital gains after that, then I can move out there and uh, rent the property that I purchased from Pete Leiden, uh, the, the current home that I live in. I still need a place to live while I'm constructing my plans. This is my forever home. This is, you know, again, where I, I envision having a place, having a horse for my daughter, a uh, four wheelers, you know. I, you know, uh, was hoping to, you know, make it my place, you know, my, my compound, you know. So uh, uh, no one's opposed to that. All of that is wonderful. That's not the issue. I know. I'm just saying to to defend against the accusations that I'm not going to build a residence in in the building and live there. You know, that's why I'm trying to lay out the my my plan from which has been my plan from day one. I just don't have the money to do the house inside the building immediately and being in the trades, I just like I said, I wanted to, you know, take my time to build the house out, out of my own pocket. Vice Mayor Rogers. So you just purchased a house in April? Yes. Where at? Seminole Woods. Is it a new house? No, two-year-old home. Two-year-old home. I got a deal on that. I bought it actually from Pete Leiden, who purchased the building or built the building right next to where my proposed building is. How long have you had your business? Six years. So where have you been running your business? Where have you been running your business? Uh, right here in Benel, next to City Electric. So it was in a commercial area? It's, it's a, in a commercial well, area. I share a spot with a mechanic. And but it's a commercial? Yes. It's some commercial. commercial. Right. All right. Any other questions for him yes. on the board? Yeah, Commissioner Nobles. Uh, why can't you just leave it residential or agricultural instead of turn it into commercial? I think that they just don't want the property to be started as commercial around there. I'm not. You can still run it. I'm not trying to change the zoning of it, you know, to commercial. I'm just asking for mixed use is all I'm asking for in terms of, and, and also to answer the question of renting space out. You know, by the time you say one thing to somebody and then they say it to five more people, of course, it's a completely different story. Um, I mentioned renting out like space in my building to a few buddies that have RVs. You know, I mentioned, you know, like if there was another, you know, somebody that, you know, had needed a little bit of space, you know, and they wanted to, you know, try to have a, get a business occupational license by the city you know, to run a little something out of that space. I got the space. I'm not, I can't predict the future in terms of offsetting any income or, or expenses. That was the discussion, you know, with, uh, that was the discussion as far as RVs. I'm not talking about renting, putting RVs outside my space and, uh, you know, turning it into a rental or storage facility. Yeah, I think that. their concern is, is agriculture. They want to leave it agricultural. All right, Madam Mayor, thank you, sir. I think you've stated your case. All right, thank you. Yes. So this is the second um, approval PZA has done where they've done a commercial uh, in building first, then residential, but never changed the zoning. So in this case, it's still going to remain ag, but 
Uh, he's at 2,000 ac I mean, <laughs> two acres based on a 10,000 square foot house. So he more than stays within the limits of his residential use. But it's not property. a 10,000 square foot house. It's a 10,000 square foot building that you're gonna put a house in that's gonna be 2,000 square foot sometime it's, in the future. It's one house. It's one 8, building. 000, it's one building. 8,000 square feet of it will be used commercially. He came to the PZA board first for mixed use, not changing the zoning. Then uh, I wasn't aware of the house purchase or any of those things. Um, so lesson learned in, in screening and protecting. But the deal that Ms. Buckles came in, same deal. It was residential zoning. We need to talk about this issue. I'm just saying. It, it, it commercial went first. It went to PZA, same process. Wow. Okay. Just saying. I hear you. Any other public comment? Yes, you can. I just think it's important to say out. out Your name, loud. please. My name is Lynn Lafferty. And I just think it's important to say out loud, it doesn't, it doesn't matter the discussions that were headed, said ahead of time. I was going to just reiterate what Ms. Rieger said about the due diligence and finding out that you're within the boundaries of the code. And again, we are not opposed to him building a building there that he lives in and operates his home base occupation out of that adheres to the language of the code. Um, he talks about having the two acres with the 10,000 square foot building and he's talking about the horses and all this. That's a limited amount of space for that. And I would assume that with that size building on that small piece of property, he's going to have to have retention and drainage and proper road built into it and all that stuff. But that's, a, that's not up to to me or I guess you guys that's the building department but um, the thing about the renting is he he didn't say that to a few buddies he said that at the PZA board meeting to the PZA board so I don't know if that you have the ability to pull up the minutes from that but that's what was stated as I address my concern about that he had the ability to come up and public comment if he doesn't rent it out that's fine and maybe that's a stipulation you know we're, we're gonna throw out what the PZA board said, you can build your building, you can have a home occupation that's limited to this size, and you cannot rent out the other side. I don't think that anybody would be violently opposed to that. Um, and it's not, I mean, you know, I'm not trying, we're not trying to do anything that's against a handshake or anything like that, because quite frankly, it doesn't matter, because we have a code in our community that we uphold. So, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. I, I took that same trip with uh, Mr. Allen George. And we went up and down 304, went up Black Point Road, and we looked at several pieces of property, you know, and uh, and he did tell me that he had other partners involved in his group, and uh, there were some land contracts that had to get, you know, undone with the timber company and stuff, and my, my brother, my late brother, eventually, him and they, they purchased some property from him on 304, and um, and that, like, well, well, given some what Miss Rieger said, you know, I remember purchasing a uh, piece of property in St. Johns County, and, and my attorney made us go get the zoning changed before we closed on it um, with the due diligence, you know, but. Um, uh, I got a couple concerns about the RV rental, you know, renting the property, you know, um, and, um, uh, you know, if, if um, with the home occupation, I, I think uh, Ms. Lafferty may be right onto something there that, uh, you know, it, it may need to be the home first and then, uh, then a uh, business. Any other comments by the board? Yes. Commissioner Rieger? Um, I've got a lot of comments. If I can follow my notes. First of all, I reside on Ohio Creek Road. I am near to Route 11. I have is, that, well, is that a problem? No, I'm, to, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm asking the attorney. That's not a problem. No, I'm just... I'm asking my, the attorney. Let the attorney answer. Hold on. Uh, how close do you live? Not very. Not very. I intend to address 
an opinion the entire length of Ohio Creek Road. No, I, I understand. Okay. I understand. Uh, how, how far, how far away? Half a mile? I have family who lives within less than two miles. Okay. Right. On the 304 end. Uh, yeah. Being, having a relationship as being a neighbor amongst other neighbors is not one that's going to give rise to a voting conflict with regard and, to And the only reason why I bring that up is because she brought up that she was on Ohio Creek Road, right, which I knew she did, but as soon as it brings up, I just want to be clear that there's not a conflict. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah, no, so I, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Because he didn't know, or maybe he doesn't know, where you live on Ohio Creek Road. So that's why I just want to be sure we're clear here about there's no problem. Okay. And I don't want no. you to vote, and then there's an issue. No, good. I'm glad you did. I didn't occur to it in that way because. The way that I'm looking at, at it is, is the character of the entire neighborhood. Because I've certainly driven it numerous times, from Route 11 to 304, and again, I have family that is not very far from, um, from this property. Um, that a special exception should be similar in nature to the permitted uses of the district. When you drive Old Hawk Creek Road, you don't see something that is a business. There are metal buildings, there are pole buildings, they are used in conjunction with agricultural uses and residential uses. And that's the intent of the ag zoning. Um, we keep referring to something called mixed use. I'm not sure we have, there's some sort of definition of that. Um, we, we bounce back and forth between home occupation and mixed use, and I think we're confusing it. Something else that concerns me is that the special exception application stated there is a statement of hardship to be imposed, but the business is already operating in a commercial place, and I'm not real sure why there's a hardship in not being able to go to this property with the business. But to me, the type of business is inconsistent with the area, with the residential character, with the agricultural character. It's not being used for ag-related or residential-related purposes. In our home, in our, in our home occupation LDCs, there are specific statements as to the character and that the building character would be that of a residence. There's a, it's implied that a home-based business would be within the residence. That's all for now. Thank you. So we have closed public comment. I just want to regroup here. We've closed public comment, asking for comments from the board, and then at that point we'll take a vote. At that point you'll entertain a motion. Well, take yeah. a vote. Yeah. A, there's going to be a motion one way or the other. That's, I'm assuming there's a motion. All right, any other comments by the board? Yeah, I just got to say, there's a, there's a lot of trailers down through there. I don't know why you said you couldn't put the trailer, but most most every building down there is a trailer. Houses through there. Okay, so with that said, um, what is the pleasure of the board regarding the appeal of the decision of planning zoning boards? And if you make a motion to approve, that means that you are concurring with the the zoning's uh, decision, correct? Yeah, I, I would recommend stating precisely what it is that you, you would affirm, okay. affirm the, the decision of the PZA and uh, grant the special exception or uh, deny. deny the, yeah, uh, overturn the decision of the PZA and deny the special exception. Okay. What's the pleasure, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Rager. Making notes based on what you said. I like to make a motion that we uphold the appeal of the decision of the planning zoning uh, to uphold the appeal. Uh, All right. To make it and, and thereby overturn okay. the decision of the planning zoning and appeals board regarding hearing PZA 2019-15, which would deny the special exception request to allow the mixed use project at 2585 Old Hall Creek Road. Okay. All that sounds technically correct. I don't normally state uphold the appeal because that's very confusing to some folks, but in any event, it is technically correct. So okay. It's, it's, so she has a motion to 
um, deny the planning and zoning's decision in a nutshell. Is that correct, Commissioner Rieger? Yes. I just want Do I have a second? Second. A second by Commissioner Nobles. I have a motion by um, Commissioner Rieger and a second by Commissioner Nobles to overturn or deny the PZA's decision. Discussion by the board? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. Uh, this commissioner has a lot of concern, um, you know, uh, with the mixed use, um, not having his home built first, uh, purchasing, you know, another home in April. Um, you know, there, there's going to be some commercial traffic um, in and out of the property. Um, and uh, also, uh, just, um, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the lack of the due diligence when, when, when he, when he purchased it, you know, um, I just, I just have some concerns about this. Uh, uh, and, and Ms. Lafferty seemed like she was willing to work with him if he had the home built first and then was occupying it and then had her uh, had, had the uh, business running out of it. And I think that's what our, our code says, too. Um, but uh, you know, that, that were my concerns with this. Commissioner Rager. I think to just narrow it down. Putting the business there is not a hardship on the applicant. And what he's asking to do in putting a business there is inconsistent with our LDC. All right. Any other comments by the board? Commissioner uh, Nobles? I think what she's concerned about is don't want to turn it into commercial property. Correct. That way they don't have to sell no other commercial, turn the rest of it into commercial. All right. Any other comments by the board? Hearing none, I close our comments, open for public comment. Come forward if you want to speak. You have four minutes. Now, now you're a public and not the applicant, in, in my mind, okay? State your name and your address. Mark Fairwood, 2585 Old Hall Creek Road. Um, what I'm proposing isn't really any different than a roofing company that's right down the street from me who has twice the volume of trucks that I have. And uh, so I'm not trying to do anything that's really outside of the, what's already happening up and down that road. There's buildings equally as big already up and down that road. I'm not trying to do anything that's not already being done on Old Hawk Creek Road. All right? Uh, my truck, my little company is smaller than a, a nearby roofing company. Uh, and uh, I uh, wish, I hope that you all consider uh, all my points. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Public comment. Anyone else? Seeing no one else come forward, I close public comment. We open back for board comment. Commissioner Nobles. Yes, I don't think she's opposing to you having a business there in your house and all in your barn. She just, just don't want to turn it into commercial property. All right. Any other comments by the board? At the risk of uh, I'm, Commissioner Reed. I'm sorry. Not trying to uh, insult Ms. Lafferty, but to some extent, to some degree, it's almost not issue. The issue is looking acutely at our land development code and what it is intended to provide for that area. All right, at this point, I'm going to call for the vote, and a, a vote yay is to deny the planning and zoning's decision. A vote nay is to agree with planning and zoning's decision. All right, so all those in favor of denying or overturning planning and zoning's decision signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Did you vote? So I'm assuming that it's unanimous because I heard no nays. All right. Uh, thank you for your time regarding this hearing. Thank you for your patience and your diligence. And thank you for all the public comments and the civility of those public comments. We appreciate that.
All right, H2, request approval to have Connect Consulting Inc. perform light rehabilitation on the Ross Water Well number four. That must be Dustin. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. How are you? I'm all right. And yourself? Good. All right. Uh, in an effort to speed things up, I'm going to summarize the summary. Uh, the city has requested approval to have Connect Consulting Incorporated re rehabilitate well number four. Well number four has been inoperable since early February 2018 due to its inability to pass bacterial testing. These test failures were due to an abundance of iron bacteria growing in and around a well casing, shaft, and pump. Since the shutdown of well four, the water treatment plant has been running on two main wells, number three and number nine. The infrastructure department is requesting to perform a light rehabilitation to bring well number four into operation to relieve constant stress applied to wells number three and number nine. Forming the light rehab will also allow the city proper time to budget for a new well installation in fiscal year 2021. Staff recommends approval of light rehabilitation of well number four by Connect Consulting in the amount of $50,000. Madam Mayor, Mr. Rigger, what's an excessive drawdown and how does that happen? What, it, what, what is an excessive drawdown? <laughs> It takes an excessive amount of time to draw down the well. Oh. <coughs> Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Rogers. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Nobles. Is the money budgeted? We do have the funds to help. This okay. specific item wasn't budgeted. We're reallocating them. Well, I didn't hear that last We're point. reallocating the funds from one project to another. What are you reallocating it from? The rehabilitation of the pump house. The, the, the fresh water pump house at the water treatment plant, putting in insulation and, and new lighting in there. We're revisiting that next budget year. Okay. So you think this is a bigger priority than that? This is absolutely a, a okay. larger priority. All right. Okay. So had to ask the question. Any other comments by the board? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor yeah, Rogers. Public safety and, and then our water. You know, right. We, yes. Yes. I get it. Anything else? All right, I close our comments, open for public comments. Seeing no one come forward, I close public comments, call for the vote. All those in favor of approval to have Connect Consulting perform light rehabilitation on number four, uh, well, water well number four, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? The motion passes. H3, request approval to repair and coat North Anderson Lift Station per the south side Rehab Community Development Block Grant requirements. Good evening, once again. Good evening. As part of the Southside Rehab CDBG, the station number two was included for rehabilitation. To save on costs, the city elected performed a rehabilitation in-house. One of the requirement or one of the required items of the grant is the rehabil the grout rehabilitation and of the deteriorated concrete and lining to preserve, protect concrete, and eliminate rotten water uh, intrusion. ESS has come in at lowest bid to perform the grout rehab and lining. They have performed work for the city in the past with emergency structural rehabilitation of a collapsing manhole. Their product and crew have proven to be exceptional. I have stood here, this is probably my third time for this lift station saying that we are saving money by doing this in-house. I just prepared some estimated numbers to show you guys, the commission, the board, and the public how much we are estimating to save. The final anticipated cost of station number two rehab is $46,723. The original price from DB Civil Construction for lift station two was $95,000. The savings of approximately $48,277 will be seen by performing the work in-house. Staff recommendation is to approve the structural rehabilitation and polyurethane lining of lift station number two by Engineered Spray Solutions in the amount of $11,569. All right, Dustin, thank you. What is the pleasure of the board? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Commissioner Nobles. Discussion by the board? Madam mm Mayor. -hmm. Uh, Commissioner Rieger? Just a quick question. Yes. This all looks very familiar. How many lift stations are there? Total in the city, owned in, by the city or private? No, in this area, in the south, in the south side city. CDBG. Well, this, this lift station number two is actually in North Anderson. 
Okay. In the south side area, that's in the CDBG grant area, it's just the South Anderson Live Station. Okay, this list and stations. so how many live stations do we have? Total, in the city, 14 owned by the city. Thank you. This list station is diagonal to Mr. Mercer's house on North Anderson. So I bet it, it, it's, it's a similar action that we've done on another list station, right? Because it all sounded very familiar to me, so. Not on any of the city live stations, to my knowledge. We haven't done the grout rehab and mining. Oh, it's so it's a different there. action, different type of action. Okay. All right. Any other comments by the board? Hearing none, I close our comments. Open for public comments. Everyone come forward. I close public comments. All those in favor of approval to repair and coat the North Anderson lift station signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. H4, request approval to reallocate contingency funds for capital equipment replacement purchases. Good evening. Good. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? There is a long background written out here. I'm going to try and summarize it and answer all questions. Um, the infrastructure department is requesting approval to reallocate contingency funds in the amount of $35,000 to a capital equipment to purchase replacement gators and mowers for roads and streets. <coughs> Currently, the roads and streets department owns three gators, all purchased in 2005. In the current state, two of these 14-year-old gators will not make it through the fiscal year. To adequately maintain the quality of litter control and right-of-way maintenance, the department is requesting the replacement of the deteriorating gators with new 2019 gators. We are choosing to stay with the John Deere brand as they have proven to be the toughest, longest lasting side by side for the price. Riding mowers are serious need. They are vital, vital instruments in the maintenance of right of ways and the state roads. Mower number 704 John Deere AC997 was purchased in 2009. <coughs> Excuse me. This mower was used extensively in the BMS contract maintaining miles of state right away until unit number 740 currently inoperated was not reliable enough when operating to work an entire eight hour day. The department wants to replace this mower with an Xmark 60 inch laser rear discharge mower, which is more suitable for the current workload demand. Xmark has proven to be a tough, rugged, and reliable mower for the city's needs. The Parks and Recreation Department has two Xmark mowers that run strong, building a, con a consistent fleet of mowers aids a more streamlined and efficient parts inventory and equipment maintenance. The Public Works Road and Street Department purchased a new mower on September 26, 2018, a Bad Boy Maverick. This mower's build quality is lower than what is acceptable for daily use. It continues to break down and needs worn and work. <coughs> Excuse me. This mower was in the shop from the beginning of May 2019 until June 28, 2019. During this two month period, the department only had two working mowers to take care of the city and state right of ways. This mower is currently being tested to see if the issue has been resolved. And an update that issue has been resolved and this mower is still currently operational for now. However, the build quality is subpar for the required work and will ultimately break down once again. The same model mower was purchased for Parks and Rec on November 27, 2018 and it's already had seven returns for warranty work. They have proven to be unreliable mowers that often leave crews stranded on the side of the road. The department is requesting to replace this mower with an Xmark 60-inch laser rear discharge mower as well. All equipment that is replaced will be added to the surplus and sold at the next available auction. Earnings will be placed back into the general fund. Road and Street will not be able to maintain the city, state, city and state right of ways without this bare minimum equipment replaces and vegetation will quickly Total cost for, for replacement for all items is $33,980 plus anticipated freight freeze. How much money do you have in contingency? $52,300. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. $52,300. All right, so you've heard the request. Um, what is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Weger, I have a question in the, uh, well, first of all, our, our paperwork doesn't say that there's a finance department review or recommendation, number one. Number two, some of these um, quote summaries said um, all, it, we're, we're buying used equipment. 
So there's no warranty. We're, we're buying all new equipment. Am I looking at the wrong thing? I mean, it seems I saw a lot of these that said no warranty. Madam Mayor. Um, hold is on it, a minute. Is it from the, the uh, vendor we're purchasing from? Ag Pro has on their invoice all used equipment, no warranty. But the number of new, number of new units that they're quoted. No, no, no. Yeah, that, that's just their disclosure. It says all used equipment sold as is, no warranty. These are new. We're, we're purchasing all brand new. <coughs> and it has a warranty. Yes. They all have warranties. Right. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Vice Mayor Rogers. I have no problem supporting it. The only problem I have is we got two quotes from the same corporation, AgPro. Um, I, I would suggest that we went out to another John Deere dealer and also get a, get a quote because you got you got AgPro in Middleburg and AgPro in Hastings, and Hastings has the uh, same has the lowest lower price. However, the other AgPro dealer, which is owned by AgPro, is in Middleburg. I, I would just ask that. Um, uh, he would go out and get another quote from a John Deere dealer that's independent of AgPro. I, I will work on that. We, we have faced some difficulty with that because they claim territories, but I will continue to work on that and do that to get another yeah, quote. Because, it, you know, it, it, it's the same company. Mm -hmm. All right. It's so what's the pleasure of the board? Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. I would move to approve this purchase uh, with the condition of... Uh, uh, they go back out to one more John Deere dealer and make sure that uh, uh, the price is, um, is um, you know, right in the neighborhood. And um, they, they, you know, that, that's the condition of the purchase. You know, they would get, get one more quote from a John Deere dealer. So I have a motion to approve with contingencies. Do I have a second? I have a second, but the thing is, is you can't talk to a sales rep, like you said, that's territorial. You can't have John Deere from another place come in here. You'll have to drive to them and just look on the floor and get it and get the price on it. Will do. All right, so we have a motion by um, Vice Mayor Rogers and a second by Commissioner Nobles. Discussion by the board. Hearing none, I close our discussion open for public discussion. Seeing no one come forward, I close public discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Those opposed? The request is approved. H5, request for authorization to move forward foreclosure proceedings on the property addressed on 401 South Church Street. Yeah, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes. Before we finish with that item, just really want to say thank you uh, to the Mayor and Commission. Uh, we're hobbling. Uh, towards the finish line and we're not going to make it with our existing equipment and uh, you will see um, additional uh, equipment uh, replacement in next year's budget and we were trying to make it we just can't get there and uh, this is uh, the, this is very important yes Vice Mayor Rogers oh, yeah, they, were, they were in desperate need of uh, upgrades okay. Did you ever check into that lease program on the tractors? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. And that'll be included in the budget, yes. Yeah. All right. Request for authorization to move forward with foreclosure proceedings on the property address 401 South Church Street. Who's taking that? I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm taking uh, Mayor, commissioners, this is a as it states, a request for authorization to proceed for uh, foreclosure proceedings on 401 South Church Street. There are a number of out outstanding code enforcement liens with regard to this property that has a history of noncompliance. It's raw land. Uh, is that correct, uh, Kristen? Yeah. Um, so long history of noncompliance. The, um, the taxes have not been paid and tax certificates have been sold on it for the many of the past years, uh, all the way back to 2012. Um, and I believe staff's hope and plan, I've participated in it. Uh, it actually, I would be actually implementing the foreclosure proceedings, uh, but I've participated and have come to understand that um, by the city taking in this parcel through foreclosure proceedings, that would be able to take it out as a uh, perennially non-compliant piece of property and potentially put it to some useful city use. We wanted to bring it to you uh, just to get the City Commission's blessing per Chapter 162. We actually have to go back before the Code Enforcement Board for them to order uh, foreclosure as well. 
but as you're the governing body of the city, before we went uh, and going and taking any property, we wanted to run it by you all. So who owns the property? Johnny Lee Nelson. You know, right? Mm -hmm. They local? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and I, I would defer to Kristen. Kristen, if you have any recollection with regard to this, because this has come out of our previous conversations on this uh, as to the... I believe that uh, Mr. Nelson actually passed away with no will. There were family members, uh, so I don't think that, again, there's any by taking care of maintaining this, and it was brought to the attention by our police chief that this continues to be a problem area for our city with hanging out, loitering, and other issues, and so he had approached the city manager and asked if it was something we could consider because there were liens on the property to foreclose that we could um, move forward and try and develop it in a way that it wouldn't continue to act as a, a hub for, you know, loitering and other issues that happen on that corner. All right. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rager. I make a motion. <laughs> that we provide this authority to move forward with foreclosure proceedings on the property address to 401 South Church Street. A motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Nobles. Discussion by the board? Any further discussion? I close our discussion open for public discussion. Seeing no one come forward, I close public discussion. All those in favor of um, this request signify by saying aye. 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 This, they opposed. There you go. H6, request to establish the fiscal year 2019-2020 proposed millage rate. Good evening, our Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Commissioners. Um, the general fund budget, proposed budget right now, is predicated on a millage rate of 6.43 mills, which is equivalent to the current year millage rate and it's point what 316 mills or 5.17 percent above the rollback rate as certified by the Flagley County property appraiser. Uh, dollar wise it will generate 146,000 approximately above the current year and about $60,000 above the rollback rate. The rollback rate generates about $83,000, $84,000 and that was um, predicated on the net new taxable value of 13.6 million approximately and that's where the budget stands now so just as a recap we cannot go any higher than what we set the millage rate tonight we can go lower so this would be worst case scenario of whatever we decide tonight yes there'll be two opportunities in september um, at each one of the budget hearings to further lower it so what's the pleasure of the board? Madam Mayor, Commissioner Rayner. I was, I don't know if I'm looking at the right thing here, but in 2017, our tax rate was 7.399. Yep. And in 2018, it was 6.87950. Yep. Um, wasn't it lower than that last year? Uh, 2019 was 6.43, and the year before that was 7 point something. I don't remember the exact. Right. But it was over seven. With, um, I'm just concerned about tying this into an arena where we may think that we need more, we may discover we need more on the campaign trail. I, not one person mentioned anything about taxes and, and, and how that would go, but nearly everyone had discussions about some of the deferred maintenance items. So I'm, I'm just throwing it out there for consideration, whether we want to keep it at this or if we, if, since we can't increase it later, do we want to increase it now? I'm just throwing it out for consideration. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Nobles. Make a request to approve it. At the recommended, recommended that, um, what was it, 6.43? 6 6.43 6 mills. I second that. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Nobles, second by uh, Vice Mayor Rogers. Madam Mayor. 
Vice Mayor Rogers. The reason why we didn't hear no complaining on the campaign trail is because we lowered it last year. So they actually got a tax decrease. And I have to say that is because our department heads, led by our chief of police, who was the interim city manager at the time, worked very hard to make that happen. Uh, that was not initially what it looked like, but they went back and bit the bullet and was able to actually decrease it to, to the degree that it was. So um, again, thank you very kindly, Chief, back there. You did a great job as interim. Yay, and, Chief. And this is one of the things that you specifically wanted to finish that you started in that interim period. So I just want to put that out there. All right. So the, this is a difficult thing to do because we have not seen the numbers. We have not seen the recommendations. We have not seen what the department heads are looking at. We've not seen the revenues coming in. I mean, this is a blind um, decision at this point, which is not, uh, not comfortable. Right. It is not comfortable. I get it. Um, so Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot. Will we be able to do all the things, or all the priority things, not of the needs, with a 6.4, um, 6.43 millage rate? Based on preliminary conversations, the priorities, yes, we'll be able to meet with this millage rate. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner, you said we can, we can do what? We can maintain meet priorities. That have been set. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. Yeah, you know, if, if that wasn't, I'm sure that their proposed would be higher than that. <laughs> it would. <laughs> it would be higher than that if, it, if that didn't meet it. Well, this I'm is just concerned about whether that's all inclusive for the things that the, that the commission may come up, may come up with, too. The, the issue is that we're dealing with a new finance director and a new city manager. And I'm not disputing what you're saying, but we haven't seen the numbers. So, um, you know, yeah. Let me, we're going to have to live with whatever it is that we decide. Yeah. Let, <coughs> excuse me. Let me uh, concur with uh, our finance director, I think, on Monday when you uh, see the budget. Uh, the budget uh, will, will bring to you solutions uh, to some challenges. Uh, there will be... Uh, 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 some uh, uh, requesting of some uh, new uh, uh, law enforcement. Uh, we're going to be able to replace uh, uh, equipment. And so I think you will see a very progressive uh, conservative budget. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, I must say, uh, since I've seen the preliminary numbers and work with the uh, department directors, Basically, they did a great job in actually putting a budget together that basically will fund the strategic plan. I got the strategic plan. Yeah. I just don't have the numbers to go with it yet. Yes, and that, that comes on, on, on Monday, and we'll, we'll okay. lay all of that out to you. But all yes, right. we feel very comfortable with the existing uh, millage that we will be able to do that. All right. So we've had a motion and a second. Any other uh, board comment? <clears throat> Hearing none, I close board comment. Open for public comment. Seeing no one come forward on public comment, I close public comment. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Those opposed? Me. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. <coughs> okay. H6, request to establish the fiscal year. Well, we just did that. H7, request to set the public hearing dates for fiscal year 2019-20 budget. Haven't we done that? No. You did it. You're doing it in two parts. You set your uh, proposed millage, and now you'll be setting your hearing dates. Okay. So what are the uh, public hearing dates? Monday, September 9th at 7 p.m. is the tentative setting of the millage. 6.30, excuse me, 6.30 is the tentative millage in the first reading of the budget ordinance. Two weeks later on the 23rd at the same time is the um, final millage rate 
and the second reading of the budget ordinance. Okay. And, and those we, meet state guidelines and everything. And we've made sure we're not in conflict with any with other... With any other taxing authority that okay. we can't be in conflict with. All right. Kristen? Yeah, Bridger State, historically, we've always done the budget hearings at 6.30, and then we immediately progress into the regular city commission meeting so as to not have to have any time if you should finish up the public budget hearing fast. Okay. So what's the pleasure of the board regarding these two uh, dates and times? I <coughs> move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Rogers. Do I have a second? Second. So Nobles, discussion by the board. Hearing none, I close our discussion. Open for public discussion. Seeing no one come forward, I close public discussion. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Those opposed? That there was set H8 request to add new positions to the pay plan. No, go ahead. No. What the uh, finance department is requesting is two new positions be added. Okay, a financial service coordinator and a fiscal analyst to the pay plan. I uh, I've now been the director for I believe ten weeks, and I've looked at functions, duties, um, requirements of those functions and duties. And I looked at four positions, the deputy finance director, assistant finance director, two financial, financial specialist positions, and a proprietary fund accountant, which was, I believe was just recently approved. And I'm not requesting that those be deleted, these be added, because I believe if these are added, um, maybe two of those positions will not be filled, saving the city money. So uh, why do you say There's that? four in there right now, okay? Right, but you okay. said none are going to be deleted, two are going to be added. Yes, uh, the office will have to be advertised, okay? okay? So I don't know what kind of applicants we'll receive. Maybe we'll receive something that's not what these require, the minimum requirements, and maybe we'll have to look at the financial list again. Maybe they'll be above it. Maybe. Okay, so I'm confused. Don't so are we having four positions and we're adding two more to make six positions in the finance department? There will not be, no, that's not, we're adding two to the pay, pay plan. To the pay plan. To the pay plan. So where we... It's a, if you want to call it a reorganization, okay, yes. But I'm not requesting all six of those positions be, be filled by no means. And this is July and the new budget goes in October 1. So, um, so how many positions do you have open currently? Currently, there are one, two, and a third one. A third one. Yes, there are three. Come on, Christine. <clears throat> Just making sure. So we have three positions out of four positions that are currently open. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Currently, right now, we have a finance specialist position that is open. Um, the Let me read these. Right now, we have an assistant finance director, proprietary funds account, and, and two finance specialists. Um, one finance, finance specialist position is vacant. So there's three right there, three positions. Okay. The request is to add three positions to the pay plan, a staff accountant, a financial services coordinator, and a financial analyst. And to keep the current positions that we have on the pay plan, um, that they may be filled in the future or they may be filled in lieu of the ones we're asking for. It's basically looking into the future is why we're not asking to remove any of those titles from the pay plan. Pay plan. Yeah. All right, it's your let me, turn. Let me, let me see if I can sort it out. Okay. You all remember back many weeks ago, uh, there was discussion and then we did some policy changes with regard to the pay plan. The pay plan is the is setting what the job title is and then steps of all the uh, different yes. things. Yes. With, with their salaries at those different steps. Mm -hmm. um, and they are asking you all, uh, staff is asking uh, the commission uh, for your approval of adding certain jobs to this play, pay plan. That is pursuant to city policy at your direction to 
fool around with, add to, or otherwise modify this pay plan. This is an essential step for new positions to, for new um, uh, titles, effectively, new jobs to be created, all right? If this is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this is not authorizing to add more employees than the finance department currently has or anything like that. This is, this is simply adding these titles and these so salaries. We're restructuring to the, the positions that are actually vacant to a different job description with the anticipation of hiring into a different job description the that vacant is, positions. That's correct. That's correct. And the reason I'm relating to other positions in the pay plan is for the future. And correct me if I'm wrong again. We have some positions within this pay plan that perennially go unfilled because there's no right. that there's no current job for such a position within a department, but it hasn't been immediately removed from the pay plan as okay. a result of that. So just because a, a job description or a, a title goes on the pay plan does not necessarily mean that we are going to fill that position. That it correct. would need to come before the board to fill. And what you're doing with having three positions that have given notice or leaving, um, you're trying to fill with a different structure of job description. That's correct. Different skill set. What's well, the pleasure of the board? Well, Madam Mayor, it does say on you too that the bottom line is an approximate savings of $9,500. So regardless of the logistics, it seems to be not be problematic in that regard. Well, my concern is that we have three positions so they're going to quickly. I don't know how quickly. Like tomorrow. Like tomorrow. What happened to the old ones? They gave notice. They're leaving. They're so you, you're needing to advertise as soon as possible, yes, ma'am. We're losing an awful lot of people. So, what's the pleasure of the Madam board? Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve. Uh, Vice Mayor made a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second. So, second by Commissioner Rieger. Discussion by the board. <laughs> Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. I, um, I don't know why this thing hasn't been advertised already got some staff leaving you know well it hasn't been advertised because it hasn't come before us because it's a change of job but it should have come before us before today I agree with the uh, the need to re to fill positions that's the that's the issue okay. yeah so what are you gonna do for staff come tomorrow tomorrow um, for the next two weeks still one will be there and we'll advertise for the other positions mm. Discussion by the board? Did I lose somebody? <laughs> we need to take a break. I don't mind, nigga. No, you go ahead. Nice <laughs> <laughs> thing.
like sure to drink water. <coughs> had a motion and a second, correct? correct. Any uh, discussion by the board? Hearing none, I close our discussion, open for public discussion. Seeing no one come forward, I close public discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We need to advertise ASAP. Yeah, and, and Mayor, we- I mean, I'm concerned about the inner workings of the department. And we may have to bring in some temp. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to bring some temporary yeah, staff in, but they've got to know what they're doing. Yeah, I talked to Christine uh, today, and we're going to reach out to the temp agency. What about the auditing firm? Don't they do? There would be a conflict of interest. But they, I thought they had another side. They, they do, but um, I think this will help us just temporarily. Yeah, it's limited what the auditing. Yeah can do actually in operation. So they can okay. provide independence. All right. <sighs> All right, report city clerk. Next Monday, the 29th, so one week from tonight, is the first uh, work budget workshop. It is the general fund. We are starting as, at your direction at 6 p.m. Uh, at your request, we did add the second workshop on August 5th, so that would be the following Monday, and we need to confirm whether you want to start that one at 6 p.m. as well, or if you want that one to start at a different That's time. That's August the 5th? Yes, ma'am. 6 p.m. And that would be the Enterprise Fund, so water, waste, water, or solid waste funds. That would be wonderful. Because we have to have enough time to be able to get through these. As you well know, this is not a simple process. I just want to make sure that 6 p.m. worked for you all. On I'll make schedule. it work. So we will be in, just so you're aware, every Monday for the next four weeks, we will be in either workshop or a regular uh, city commission meeting. Okay. Anything uh, else? How many of us will be there? How what? How many people will be there all together? How many people will be here? Well, the same amount that's probably here, and uh, all directors will be here, and then uh, all the city commission. Yeah. All right, Mr. Boss. I was actually going to bring exactly that up. Uh, I was just looking at, at my calendar for conflicts. Um, I have a conflict on August 5th. Uh, it's the Enterprise Fund budget. I look back through the last couple of years, uh, except for times when it was happening right before a regular meeting, I'd actually attended budget meetings by phone. I don't think I've said a single word in a budget meeting uh, in the last I, five I'm years. okay with that if you, um, if yeah. we, and I'm even okay that if you don't want to attend by phone and we need to call you if we have a question. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think you, you go above and beyond to support us and do what you do over here. So. The budget should not have legal uh, ramifications. Of course, as soon as I say that, no. you know what happens. I just you're, cursed it. You're right, but in 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 every city we represent, it, we have budget uh, okay. meetings. Uh, pardon me, the budget workshops, and obviously the budget hearings. But okay. uh, if that's all right with you, um, I will be available by phone on the 29th and the fifth um, my my availability will be spotty because i will be in a, another meeting in another city but uh, i should have opportunity to be able to step out at any well, we'll text you okay very good that works thank you you're a busy man yes you're gonna be in pearson pearson i'm gonna be in Cocoa beach then actually oh all right city manager uh, just uh, once again overview of the uh, city manager's report I encourage you to uh, uh, read through that. Um, also, as I indicated, uh, and I'm going to have the finance director to give us how, uh, as is uh, state of the finance. 
Uh, once again, um, we do have the strategic plan uh, completed, and uh, we will be getting them this strategic plan before Monday. Uh, before Monday, and uh, and basically we will be hitting uh, some highlights of this strategic plan, but uh, you will be able to identify the funding uh, as it relates to the priorities that's in this uh, uh, strategic plan. So what you have, uh, Commissioner Riga, is I think I gave you and the mayor uh, and the others are incomplete. It's completed oh, now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chris, you want to just give a quick overview? Uh, just very quickly. Through June 30th, which is nine months of the fiscal year, 75% of the year, and all three major funds, revenues continue to exceed expenditures. Um, that, that amount dwindles a little bit this time of year because basically our property tax money is in, and we still have expenditures, but right now um, things still look good. Okay. Yeah, it's, we're in the lean years now as far as... This, this is the lean. December actually. Right. So we need to carry over to get through October to December. Yeah. Okay, Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. May I make a comment about the, uh, and I didn't mention it to you briefly, but um, I believe in the KISS theory, and as a practical matter, these are internal documents. I'm an obsessive note taker. And these, all these colors, I'm not even sure why we're wasting all the colored ink, but anyway, um, I personally would prefer to see it in black and white and a few more things on the pages, we have fewer pages. I just think we can make this more concise and a little more workable. Anything else? <laughs> That's it, Mayor. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Reader, do you have anything? Actually, I do. It's, uh, <laughs> did you break it? I guess so. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner Reader. When his legs fly in the air, it gets my attention. <laughs> it's um, something that I have been putting off because our agendas have been full. They don't seem to be getting any lighter, but it's an important issue to me. Um, we are the only municipality in Fargo County that starts our meetings with prayer. I've been discussing this with staff, but anyway. Um, and I personally know folks in our community who are uncomfortable with this and who either ignore it or leave the meeting room. And that is something I have done. It's a little more awkward for me to try to do that here. I'm the advocate of the First Amendment and the separation of church and state. Recently, our commission came under fire in the press. The article referenced that on July 8th, the United States Court of Appeals upheld the case of Williamson v. Brevard County, when the commissioners were excluding different beliefs or dissenting points of view. Um, public comments in our meetings here in a recent past have also referenced the prayers. Um, and while our attendees aren't coerced, they are a captive audience, and it may not be part of what their belief structure or, um, or prayers for themselves would be. And you constantly hear that in places about returning prayer. The problem with that is whose prayer do you use? Because so many people have different types of beliefs. I respectfully request that the agenda for the meetings of the Benel City Commission delete the invocation item and replace it with a moment of silence and reflection or a moment of silence to honor our military and first responders or something similar. And I think this is an important issue. Do you have any comment, Rigard? <clears throat> sure. Um, Commissioner Rieger and I have, have discussed this matter uh, at length and she shared her, her views and concerns with me. Uh, the general advice I would give the Commission is this. Um, you have it within your discretion to 
as she would recommend, no longer have invocation within the meetings. Or it is legally permissible on citing U.S. Supreme Court precedent, including the uh, recent 11th Circuit opinion that did come down with regard to the Brevard County case. It is constitutionally permissible for the city commission to have an invocation to have prayer in the meetings. If you were to decide to continue to go that route, as opposed to uh, going the route that Commissioner Rieger would like, uh, one thing I would recommend is a rejuvenation of the process you all had uh, been following uh, for a, a, a good period of time. Uh, that is, while it is not specifically required, uh, because there's still a lot of vagaries when it comes to this in U.S. Supreme Court uh, precedent. It is one that in the Town of Greece case that came down about four or five years ago, I think it prompted a little bit of discussion uh, amongst us at that time. Um, that opinion actually substantially expanded the latitude that, for example, city commissions, county commissions have with regard to it, provided a fair bit of clarity to the fact that you are allowed to do it. Uh, what that generally included was a process, a process you all have, um, have had that reached out to uh, various religious communities within the area to provide an opportunity uh, to be able to have uh, those uh, folks, whether they are um, pastors or, or other uh, officials from those communities or uh, others be able to come in and offer invocations. So um, I would recommend that going forward. It's, it would uh, be a, a better practice uh, to be able to demonstrate uh, what was a key component in the Brevard uh, County case and, and one of the concerns you raised, uh, which was uh, demonstrating a willingness to have folks from a diversity of uh, religious backgrounds uh, to come and speak uh, at invocation. It's a history I know that the city of Bunnell has had in the past, uh, and it helps uh, continue that forward. So that's the decision that, that could be before you could elect not anymore to do it, or you could, under U.S. Supreme Court precedent, uh, proceed forward. And I would recommend, and I've spoken with Kristen preliminarily, uh, about it. it's typically uh, through the city clerk's office that, that things like that are facilitated uh, to engage in a, a process like that. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. I'm not inquiry about that process. Apparently it, there hasn't, it hasn't taken any formal form since 2012. And the form that it was taking, to my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, was a letter um, inviting um, those uh, churches, whatever, who have a BTR in the city of Bunnell. It's my premise that that is um, not sufficient. It does not necessarily offer out to anyone who has dissenting or different beliefs to be part of that process. I'd be glad to offer additional thoughts. Uh, it, with regard to uh, any sort of process we would end up formulating and recommending, uh, I think we would be addressing those issues. Uh, there's substantial discussion in the uh, Town of Greece, uh, yeah, Town of Greece case, uh, again, the one that came out a, a number of years ago, that um, uh, recommended, and it's actually what the Town of Greece was doing, recommended a number of different um, uh, avenues for collecting those um, uh, uh, religious institutions or, or otherwise who would be interested in participating. BTRs alone uh, might not uh, might not be what we would eventually recommend. Uh, for example, and we don't use phone books very much anymore, but uh, they had uh, recommended. Uh, phone books and uh, seeking out through the Chamber of Commerce and other um, uh, other institutions that, that may have an even broader list. The goal would be to be broad and as inclusive as possible. 
Well, certainly, if someone wanted to open us with prayer, there's all they would have to do is to contact the city clerk. We, we have not limited to one faith or one denomination or one church. Um, and that, that would be an essential component of what I would end up recommending as well, uh, folks seeking to uh, add themselves to the list and participate um, would, would be part of that, not just those who were reached out to by the city. Yeah, okay. Anything else, Commissioner Rieger? Um, we talked a little bit too about the appearance with the commissions giving the prayer versus yeah, and, and I had an opportunity to look at, at that uh, further um, and go ahead and talk a little bit about it now. As you all will recall, for a number of years, pretty much every meeting, uh, a member of the public, the general public, uh, as a general matter, had uh, given uh, the prayer for most all the time I've been with you all. Uh, and then uh, many months ago, mentioned that we're having long meetings now. We were having some meetings where nothing was going on uh, for a while, and at that point, we had nobody in the audience. Correct. And, and you all had uh, elected to take up the mantle and, and say some prayers. Um, this and there's is been times in the past where I've seen pastors come in and I've actually asked them if they would be willing to open us in prayer. Absolutely. And there is um, uh, the law on this very particular subject is, you know, you're going to love it, all over the place. Oh, they, oh, all over the place? All over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this, by the way, is on a very particular thing. Uh, took a look, two different circuits that the United States is divided up into federal circuits, all right? different parts of the country where uh, different circuit appellate uh, divisions make decisions. You can end up with drastically different controlling law in different areas. In the Fourth Circuit, for example, where North Carolina is, um, they ruled that where the um, commissioners on a county commission had ruled that only they, not that, you know, them sometimes, you know, if you can't do anything else, and uh, the public, but just only they uh, said the prayers and they excluded everyone else. The Fourth Circuit, it's up in North Carolina, said, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But up in Michigan, in the Sixth Circuit, same exact thing, they said you could. Hmm. I wouldn't recommend going the Sixth Circuit route. Where well, you was only never, no one, no one, that yeah. was never what we did here. Of course. It was by default when there was no one else to do it. Right. And one thing I would, would mention, that the Eleventh Circuit, which is where we live, it encompasses Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, uh, has not ruled on the particular issue. One thing I will mention is in the Brevard County case, um, which did rule against Brevard County. Um, but I will tell you the facts in that case were the, the, the facts in that case were effectively came down to the court um, ruling that based on the evidence before them, the commissioners, the county commissioners there were being crystal clear that they would only allow monotheistic religion and certain ones and not others and all that. I mean, it, it, was, it was an extreme scenario. I was, I was kind of surprised uh, looking at all the facts of that. Um, one thing they did mention uh, that the court mentioned in passing without any negative comment on it was they did have members of the public, members of the clergy, and every once in a while, county commissioners. So they never said anything about one way or the other, but they never called out the fact that a county commissioner once in a while, that that was prima facie unconstitutional. I only mention that to say this. That is an area that I would recommend we do our best to work with the community, to get folks to come in and offer invocations there and we can deal with how we deal with our the permutations in every meeting as we go okay anything else commissioner Rieger? Uh, are we going to have a consensus on my request to uh, change our agenda or would you all like some time to contemplate it well um, vice mayor rogers we opened up this meeting looking at the old glory right there. We put our hand on our heart and we said we are one nation under God. The Congress of the United States of America, what did they open up in, Counselor? They opened up with an invocation. With an invocation. You know, we got uh, a battleship sitting there right off the coast of Iran with 1,500 Marines right now. 
with uh, the Moab bombs on the planes, okay? We have uh, an opioid epidemic going on in this community. We have 16-year-olds killing 17-year-olds for $120 worth of weed. <laughs> this commissioner is going to open up in prayer. I have no problem with the prayer, and I have, in the past, have been respectful to the new commissioners. I don't think I've ever asked you if you wanted to pray. I've not asked Commissioner Nobles if he wanted to pray. When Commissioner Sowell was here, I asked him. He said he was not comfortable. I said that was fine. He's not comfortable praying in public. And that was fine. I've never put anyone on the spot that was not willing to open in prayer. And the only time it defaulted back to us to pray was when there was no one in the audience that was willing to get up and, and do the prayer. So um, I have no problem with the prayer. I have no problem if someone doesn't want to be here during the prayer. It is a pretty standard procedure that we call the roll. We say our Pledge of Allegiance. We have our prayer and we move on to the agenda so someone can sit in the bathroom or come in five minutes late if it's offensive to them. But this is one country under God. This is one com commissioner that feels very strongly that prayer is appropriate. And if you feel uncomfortable with the method that we've done it, I'm perfectly happy with someone else in the audience that will stand up and say a prayer. Um, I've never, I mean, we have put out letters before, but I've never um, denied anyone who came up and wanted to pray. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Nobles. How long have y'all been doing that? For years. If it, if it ain't How many going, years? It's 2011. 2011. You can't Indeed. make everybody happy. You just, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm sorry, I didn't hear what he said. The last thing. The last he thing. said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but I mean, are, are you saying you're okay with the process? I'm okay, I'm okay with it. So, I just don't like doing it. I mean, I don't do it myself. But I, I understand. So I going back to your concern, if we can go and find others that would be willing to come and open us up, I'm fine with that. And um, I think that's the appropriate thing for this commission. I don't really care what the rest of the commissioners do in the county. That's their decision, their choice. Um, but I like the idea of setting the tone for a meeting and starting the meeting under the auspices of a God that cares about us. And that's my personal conviction and that's why we do what we do here. So I'm not demeaning what you're, what you're saying, and I understand your point. And I think that if you're willing to compromise on that, we can certainly work on having someone in the audience to, to do the prayers, to open up. Madam Mayor, I'm compelled to respond to the concerns about things that are going on in this world and in this community, and that isn't the issue that I'm discussing. I understand that. My issue is that yeah, is, is that everyone might pray differently, in a different manner, in a different way. Some don't pray. There are some that don't attend church, but they have other types of religions, like humanism, that they, it's not even you know, call that a, a, a religion, it's a belief system. And I know that some of our attendees in, in the past have, have had that concern. I've had that concern. It doesn't, how I pray, and if I pray, is a non-issue when it comes to my position here. And I just feel it's not the place to have those prayers. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, thank you. Okay. Vice you Mayor Rogers. Vice Mayor Rogers. No, ma'am. Commissioner Nobles? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Chief Foster and his deputies. He's probably one of the best chiefs that Bunnell has had, or one of the best. And his officers, I've been in here several times. It's just award after award, each of them, such a small town. So I don't think we could, I, there's no way we could find any better. And whatever y'all do out there, don't let nothing drag you down, because nothing's going to drag you down. Thank you for that, Commissioner Nobles. Appreciate it. Um, of course, you know how I feel about the police department, so that goes without saying. Um, 
they're a vital component to our our city and to the people who live here and the people who work here and the people who play here and i appreciate all of them um on the 25th i think this thursday uh we're having meet the mayors forum at the uh, real estate place it's open open time for i get to say three minutes and then the audience of the real estate agents get to submit cards of questions they want to ask the mayors and so it's always one of those things where you kind of wait and see who's going to be the one that's going to be in the hot seat usually it's palm coast but it doesn't always work that way um, and i want to thank kristen for her efforts to help me to pull together ideas because I want to present the good of the city and where we're moving in the city and um, what type of um, initiatives that we're looking at because this is a real estate forum and then uh, see where it goes from there. So thank you, Kristen. I appreciate that help. And that's all I have. So uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Vice Mayor, do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Nobles. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? You're going to go home? Thank you. Have a good week. Here was about the recent UDR case, too. Sorry, I'm going to go to the other one. Sure. Every year he says he's going to come every year because I forgot. It's no beautiful. Don't you have a calendar on that phone? Put it in.